Do you have a customer onboarding checklist? Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleanbiz.com. You know, whenever we take on a new client, we should always have an onboarding checklist. It's very important that we get the information that we need to make sure that the operations run smoothly. So for example, what I always like to do is in my checklist, I'll have a number of different things. So I'll, uh, first of all, I'll set expectations. I'll have emergency contact information. Uh, you know, how am I going to enter, enter the location? Uh, location for the alarms, you know, quality control, breakage, damage, uh, and additional work. So that's what I have on my checklist. And I want to make sure I go over that with my clients uh, to make sure that everything will run smoothly. So first of all, let's talk about uh, setting expectations. And generally, you know, we'll do this uh, when we meet with the prospect uh, by letting them know, you know, what, we'll, what we're going to accomplish in that first week, what we're going to accomplish in the first 30 days, 90 days, and even for, after the first year. You know, uh, the expectations that we're setting is how we're going to perform and what they're going to see different. Um, and that comes in a lot of different forms, so give that some thought. Um, the other thing that we can do is that on our emergency uh, contact information, we want to make sure we have that information. So who is it that we contact? Uh, if we were to come in for a commercial building and we're coming in after hours, let's say we're at 6 o'clock and about 8 o'clock uh, something happens to where we need to contact the, an emergency uh, uh, contact uh, person. Well, first of all, we call 911 depending on whatever the situation was. But if it's something else that, uh, that would only involve the, the manager or our contact person, well, we got to have that information ready. And in an uh, earlier uh, video, I talked about ID badges. And that's one of the things that we can put on an ID badge is that emergency contact information. So uh, <clears throat> the next thing would be that we, we got to make sure um, we know how we're going to enter the, the location. Now, if it's a building, you know, we're going to have to have a key or a key fob or a code or something to get into the building. The same thing is true for a, for a residential home. You know, are they going to leave a key for us under a mat? Uh, do they have a code system? Uh, or are they going to be home? So we have to know that, so we have to talk to our prospects and our clients about that. <clears throat> now, the, the other thing is, too, is that once we gain access to the location, we have to know where the alarms are at. Because uh, let's say we were cleaning a home, uh, we got a key, we, got, we walk in, we got to know where those alarm codes are so we can tell our team uh, when we're doing our initial training. So that way we can go right to the alarm, disarm it, and not worry about any false alarms. And the same thing is true as if you're cleaning a, a commercial building. That, that same thing can happen. Uh, so you've got go, you to know where the location of the uh, security alarms are. And the thing is, is that... Uh, again, when you're entering the location, you have to know which door you should be coming in at. Um, you know, because if they have a main door that you that you go into and then the alarm's right there, well, then you want to make sure that everybody has that information and knows that they, they, they go in this doorway and their alarm's right there. So, very important. <coughs> now, one of the things about the alarm codes, too, is that if you're cleaning any banks, uh, they have panic codes. And um, we used to clean a lot of banks. And in fact, <clears throat> that was one of the things is that uh, when we, uh, we come in after hours and you don't know if somebody could be uh, watching the location or, or, or something like that there, but they could actually f follow you in. So you walk up to the door, you, go to, you unlock the door, you go to disarm and things, and here this person's uh, approached you, you know, that's going to try to rob, rob you or whatever they're going to do, but they want to get access to the bank. Well, one of the things that you can do is that when you're uh, entering your code, you actually have a panic code that you can actually enter into the key system, which will uh, send a sign of alarm to the police, letting them know that there's, a, there's a, an issue at the bank. Um, luckily, we never had to use ours, but uh, you know, for every bank that we had, we had a panic code. So uh, that's something to always uh, discuss with the prospect and your client. Uh, very important. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, something else you want to uh, talk about is, you know, uh, any special requests. Uh, we had some uh, customers where they, where they had some special requests where they wanted us to water their plants, you know, w which was fine. Um, and also, they wanted us to do the recycling, collect the recycling, and, and uh, go ahead and, and bag it and, and put it into a, a separate location. 
And uh, now back to the banks, the, the banks also had a special request. What theirs was is when we collected the trash behind the teller line, we always had to collect that trash in a separate trash bag, and we always had to uh, tie it up and lay, label it and tag it uh, with the date. Uh, then we had to put that in a certain area uh, because we kept that trash for about three days. And we did that because uh, in case there was an error or something that didn't, didn't uh, uh, run correctly, well, they could always go back into the trash and get any receipts that they may have. So very important, always ask your, your clients about any special request that they may have. Uh, the other thing is now on our checklist is that we have quality control. Uh, now quality control can be done in a number of different ways, especially today with all the apps that are out there. And uh, I would probably suggest that you know you can do you can do your quality control in a number of different ways. But the bottom line is that it's very important that you do quality control. You have to be walking the building and checking and seeing how good a work that's being done. And you have to have a, some kind of a system in place so you can grade it. You know, uh, we have to know if we're either at a pass or fail. So very, very important. So today you can do a couple of different things. You can do a paper quality control inspection or you can use an app. Um, more and more companies are going to the app, but if your budget doesn't allow you to afford an app, well then just go and use a paper system. Um, having a system in place is better than not having nothing at all. For, for, for those of you that have the budget and you can afford a, the monthly payment for the app, uh, you know, there's many apps to choose from, uh, so you know, select wisely. And uh, the nice thing about some of the apps that are out there, and I'm going to give a plug for one, Clean Smarts, uh, you know, that's, a, that's a great app. Uh, but with that app there, you're able to do quality control inspections. You're able to take photos. You can make comments and, uh, and, and uh, know exactly what, what's going on. You know, the other nice thing is that you're able to see uh, what supplies you need. Uh, you can also send, send that to your team, uh, to, the, you know, to your manager, and or for, to the client. And that's the thing that you have to think about is when you're doing quality control is that, you know, share it with your client. Let them know that you're, that you're doing these in, on a regular basis and give them a report. Let them know what you're finding. Uh, it's better to be proactive than reactive. And that's the problem with many cleaning companies is that they're reactive. You don't want to be reactive. So in case, you know, what we always, uh, in, in fact, what we always did is I always asked the prospect, uh, before they became my client, uh, how often they wanted to do quality control walkthroughs. Uh, because some of my clients set up on a monthly walkthrough to where I met them at their facility and I did a walkthrough with them uh, each and every month. <coughs> and uh, you know, that's, that's fantastic. You know, that's, that's how I built such strong relationships with all my clients is uh, first of all, doing quality control and making sure that we're performing at the standard that we said that we would perform at for the investment that they paid us. Very, very important. So uh, in either case, make sure that you select some way of doing it. So either have your paper, your app, or your in-person. Uh, always do your quality control inspections because it's very, very important. Uh, the next thing on our list is we have breakage. <clears throat> now, breakage is very important. You know, if we're uh, a dust in an office or a home and we happen to knock something over and break it, well, what's our, what's our uh, procedure for handling that? You know, let's have that conversation with our client or our prospect ahead of time. You know, this is how we handle breakage, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> and the same thing is true for uh, the next thing on our list is damage. Now, if we were to be cleaning a surface, doesn't matter if it's in a home or an office, you know, and we happen to damage the surface because maybe our, maybe our cleaner put the wrong type of chemical on the surface and it burned it. Or, or whatever. Uh, well, we have to have a procedure of how we're going to handle in that, and it's best to talk to your prospect and your client before that happens. You know, let them know here's the steps that we take to handle any damage that may have been done to any surfaces in your home or office. Very important. So then, uh, the last thing on my list I have here is additional work. Now, and this happens. Uh, you know, it can happen. Uh, you know, homeowner may say, well, can you do this, can you do that, and so on and so forth. Now, the thing is, is that you've got to be careful both on commercial and residential. You've got to be careful of uh, scope creep. And what scope creep is, and I did a video on this uh, before, is that your, your customer is going to continue to ask you to do additional work. Well, can you do this? And you'll think in your mind, well, that'll only take a couple minutes, not a big deal, so you're not going to, you're not going to charge them. But then they continue to do that. And here, next thing you know, you have, you know, six, seven things that you're doing. 
which is occupying a, a 30 minutes or longer of your time when you come in to clean, and now and they're not and you're not billing them for it. So that's what the scope creep is, uh, and it's it costs you money, it costs you profit. So don't make that mistake. Have that conversation for about additional work. You know what what kind of work would it be? Uh, talk about if you're going to use any work orders. You know when they have any additional uh, any additional work request. You know is there a work order that's going to be filled out? So you got to be able to have a system in place and make sure that we we uh, understand what that process is and that they understand the process that any additional work will be billed. So because again we don't want the scope creep uh, to to <laughs> creep up on us and uh, cost us lose lose profit. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, you know, that's our customer onboarding checklist. Um, now, yours can look different. Uh, you could have different subjects. You could have more. You could have you could have twice the list that I have, three times the list. You know, whatever. the The important thing is that you have a customer onboarding checklist, and uh, you definitely want to do that each and every time that you you bring on a new client. And again, like uh, like I said throughout this video, I kept on re talking about the prospect, and that's really that that's where that initial. Uh, conversation needs to happen is when they're a prospect. And then you can reinforce it when you go over their, your your uh, customer onboarding checklist with your client. So, hopefully, you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and click on the, the like uh, button and uh, and please make some comments down below. You know, share share your thoughts, uh, and uh, we'll get a conversation going. And uh, as usual, if you uh, have not uh, signed uh, signed up for our um, <clears throat> for our our channel, or <clears throat> you haven't subscribed to our channel, excuse me, I've got something in, <clears throat> something in my throat. But if you haven't uh, subscribed to our channel, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and uh, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of videos on how to, uh, how to uh, build a successful cleaning business. So until then, we'll see you.